Female nipple piercings, pros, cons, advantages or disadvantages by a piercer. Also going to go through um, what you should look for when choosing your piercer, etc. The piercing experience itself, healing the piercing, living with the piercing, and jewelry options. And of course, what happens if you decide that you just don't want them anymore and you take them out and abandon it. Coming up next on Pros and Cons by a Piercer, Season 2, Episode number 4. So I would advise you, if this interests you, to uh, stick around. For those who are new here, my name is Dave O. I'm a professional body piercer and have been since 1994. I own and operate the Axiom Body Piercing Studio located here in Des Moines, Iowa, inside Skin Kitchen Tattoo. So when I talk to you about these things, I'm talking with a level of expertise that comes with being in the body piercing industry for well over 26 years. On these, I usually kind of talk about, you know, where the placement is of this particular piercing and uh, the history. And we'll go through that real quickly. And I'm, I'm going to give you the abridged version because we got a lot of information to go through today. Uh, the first thing is, is the piercing should be uh, at the base or just slightly in front of the base or outward from the body uh, of the nipple. Should never be behind the nipple or into the areoria, uh, that kind of textured, uh, colored area that is that surrounds the nipple. We want to avoid going back there because it can affect the milk ducts, which is very important in female health and et cetera. So it should always be at the base, generally traditionally done uh, horizontally and as straight as possible, though you can request them to be done at different angles depending on what your tastes are. Uh, the other thing is, is that I do suggest initially doing it with a barbell, and we'll get more into that and the reasoning behind it. Uh, they can be done with rings, but in both cases, they need to be extremely oversized and just to allow for swelling. Now the history. Uh, there's a lot of folklore out there about nipple piercings. Uh, a lot of a quote, uh, sources that are less than reliable and are motivated in other ways other than factualizing history and documenting history. Uh, the one reference I know for sure and it's kind of vague because it doesn't really state whether or not it was just males or it was females, is some of the native tribes um, in now Texas, uh, right along the Gulf Coast, did pierce their nipples and I believe their upper lip, if memory serves correctly. The rest of it is all kind of conjecture and folklore and titillizing gossip for the most part. Part of the issue with this particular piercing and a lot of private piercings is uh, they weren't visible to the public, people weren't walking around with their nipples hanging out, so pe especially females, so people didn't see them. There was probably certain individuals because it's just one of those piercings or areas of the body that just cries out to be pierced. I'm sure there were people out there that were pierced. The thing is, we don't really have any documentation until the tail end of the 19th century uh, in the beginning of the 20th century. Both cases, these were more extreme kind of uh, fringe elements, people that were performers, people that were heavily tattooed, corseted, modified, etc. So this is not a trend. This is not a widespread use of this particular piercing. It's more of kind of just an isolated incident. As far as modern piercing, uh, female piercings were probably one of the first uh, first piercings developed there in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Um, they just kind of follow the whole train straight into the station. Uh, this has been there from the start. Of course, originally done mostly on men, but of course, progressed into women. Now, with that out of the way, time to move on to the pros, the advantages, the things we do like about this piercing. Um, and the things that you're going to enjoy, hopefully, if you get this piercing. Number one, first one right out of the bat, it can increase sensitivity. Now, with things like this, when piercings are involved, I generally say that it may make it better. It probably won't make it worse, but it'll definitely be different. A lot of people have experienced an increased sensitivity of their nipples after the piercing is done and healed. 
Some people find that a little bit more on the painful side. Some people find that more on the pleasurable side. It varies from person to person. The other thing is, is that it is really common for women who have breastfed to get this done to try to bring back some of that sensitivity. And I've had clients that have claimed that they've had good success with that. So that's that, I guess, is a good reason to get your nipples pierced if you want to increase the sensitivity of the area. Number two, as I mentioned earlier, it, it it's one of those parts of the body that just cries out to be pierced. It protrudes from the body, um, and it does enhance the look of the body. Having a sh uh, shiny object there and something that has a little bit of bling bling in it and sparkles and et cetera can really add to the beauty of the area. It can be either something simplistic and very elegant to something that's a little bit more extreme and exciting. It varies from person to person in your personal taste, but it is one of those parts of the body that a piercing just seems to look natural in and really does help to enhance the look of the area. Number three, can cause the nipple to develop and be more pronounced than it originally was. Uh, with nipple pier nipples, everybody is shaped differently. Some people have well-developed nipples. Some people have less than well-developed nipples. Some people are very self-conscious about it. And getting them pierced can cause them to be a little bit more pronounced and can also get them to a point where they look like they're in a wrecked state almost all the time. This also can improve or help uh, with inverted nipples, depending on what type of inverted nipple you have and how drastic it is. There are some risks with doing inverted nipples. I did an entire video on just inverted nipples, and it's linked in the description. Um, I advise that if you do have inverted nipples and you're considering getting this done, check out that video. There's a lot of good information in there. Now, uh, I would say with inverted nipples, uh, as far as uh, luck-wise and, and effect, I've had, I'd say, out of four out of the five, four out of five piercings that I've done, I've seen probably maybe one that rejected or had migration issues. Usually, I have a pretty good success rate with it, but part of that comes down to the anatomy of the person you're piercing. Um, if you are really heavily inverted and I don't think you're going to have a, a successful heel, of course I'm going to deny doing the piercing. I'm going to say, nope, not going to do it. Number four, uh, this piercing is easy to hide. It can be a private thing that only you and maybe your partner knows about. Uh, it's basically once, uh, once it's under your clothing, the only time anybody are ever going to notice it is if you tell them about it or you show them. Uh, there are some situations with uh, extremely tight shirts or women, I've had clients that have said sports bras are a little bit more visible, that the jewelry may appear more visible. Um, but usually if you adjust your uh, clothing in a way that reduces that, most people don't ever know that you have this, especially if you use like a small barbell with small balls on it where it, it's just not going to have that high of a profile. Number five, this piercing has a long history of healing with uh, fairly easily and with good results. It's not like other piercings like dermals, uh, you know, service to service piercing, bridges, and all kinds of other weird stuff. This piercing is going to heal probably if you have the right anatomy and you take care of it. It's going to take a while, but it usually will, uh, you will have good results. All right, with the pros out of the way, let's start in on the cons, the disadvantages, the things that we don't particularly care for. Starting with number one, breastfeeding. I uh, Basically, this piercing shouldn't affect breastfeeding at all other than one thing. Jewelry has loose pieces. Um, so if you're going to feed, you need to remove the jewelry while you're doing it. There is no type of jewelry that you can put in there that doesn't have the possibility of causing or becoming a choking hazard. So it puts you in a situation that if you want to continue to breastfeed and keep the jewelry or keep the piercings where you're taking them out constantly and putting them back in and taking them out and putting them back in and taking them out and putting them back in. Uh, it really is a situation where you can damage the piercing or have problems getting the jewelry back in. Some people have done this. It does take a lot of dedication, but I generally say if you're planning a family anytime in the near future that you consider waiting until after you're done uh, with that and then getting them pierced. Number two, 
This piercing has a slightly longer healing period than most piercings, uh, ranging anywhere from six months to 12 months or longer. They can take a little while to heal. Now, during that time, you do have to dedicate or make that dedication and have that discipline uh, to clean it properly and avoid possibilities of cross-contamination and et cetera. I don't go a little bit more into that but later on, but you need to understand going in that it's going to be like that. Now, is it going to hurt the whole time? Probably not. Uh, you might have little patches of grumpiness, which I'm going to talk about later, but for the most part, it 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 hurts and then it doesn't and it's not going to be painful the whole time it's just you have to take those precautions to make sure they don't get infected number three this piercing can migrate or reject for those that don't understand what migration rejection is migration is where the piercing slightly moves a little bit in the tissue either you know sometimes horizontally sometimes vertically sometimes outward from the body um, also, and then rejection is where your body completely rejects the jewelry all the way to the surface. Nipple piercings because it's kind of softer tissue and because uh, there's pressure on it from clothing, etc., are a little bit more prone to this. However, I have to say that if you have the correct anatomy, the correct jewelry is put in there, and you take care of it properly, you're probably not going to notice any migration or rejection. If you do see some migration, it's probably going to be slight or to a point where you don't even notice it. Number four, this piercing can go through grumpy phases. It is really acceptable to trauma um, even after they heal. And for those that don't know what grumpy phases are, it's kind of a, a loose term for any time a piercing that's doing really, really well, and then all of a sudden something happens or for no apparent, uh, you know, no easy to define reason, it starts being sore and grumpy and a little uncomfortable. Uh, this piercing, nipple piercings are just prone to that. Even after the piercing heals, it is not uncommon. And I've had female clients, I wouldn't say it's like the, the majority of them, but some of them state that even after the piercing is healed, when they go through their monthly cycle, that suddenly the piercing will get sore and tender and be uh, a little bit more grumpy during that period of time. Uh, that varies greatly from person to person, and it may have more to do with your sensitivity in the area during that time of the month more than anything else. Number five, it can greatly be affected how healthy this piercing continues to be even after it heals by the jewelry that you wear in it. Um, I'm going to go more into jewelry a little bit later, so stick around, but this piercing, even after it heals, drastic changes in jewelry can cause major problems that are difficult to get rid of and can be very uncomfortable and kind of a bit on the ugly side. So it's definitely a piece of, or definitely a piercing that you need to maintain even after it heals, uh, just to be on the safe side. Now let's talk about what you should look for when you're choosing your piercer or thinking about getting it done. The first thing is, is your piercer should be well experienced at this piercing and have a lot of experience doing it. Um, yeah, most of them will have, including myself, a portfolio of healed piercings. You also want to pay attention when you're looking at photographs of piercings that it doesn't look red and agitated around it or you don't see any signs of marker or anything. Because generally, the, if they're there, that means that piercing or that pier photo was taken literally minutes after the piercing was done. It really doesn't speak to the whole nature of piercing and whether or not they have the ability and information to, me, to let you he or give you and the proper techniques to ensure that piercing actually heals. The other thing is, is that the professional and informative, do they give off information immediately? Are they kind of closed? Do they come off as kind of a jerk? Are they kind of creepy, et cetera? They should make you feel at ease, and they should do that through how they interact with you. Pay attention to that because... It can be a little uncomfortable to disrobe in front of a perfect stranger, even if they are a professional. But if you have somebody that's a little uh, creepy, it's going to be much, much worse. And it's generally a sign that they're not the piercer you want, they're not experienced, and they are not skilled. One question you do want to ask them is whether or not they do the piercing freehand and whether or with forceps. My experience and preference is they should be done with forceps. I have seen more mistakes of piercings not being straight or being on one side it's at the base and the other side it's through the areola and all kinds of weird stuff by people doing freehand piercings. Now that doesn't say there aren't some piercers out there that have a lot of experience doing them freehand that don't make these errors. But 
it's an increased likelihood. So if your piercer does do freehand, talk to them about their experience level, et cetera. If they've only been doing this for a few years, I'd advise possibly finding someone else or just demanding, hey, can you just use forceps on mine? The, sh the piercer should offer some form of consultation that covers uh, some of the things we've already talked about and some of the other things we're going to talk about, things that are that involve how to take care of it properly, what the, uh, what the healing period is going to be, um, also, they should talk to you about any risks that are involved with getting this particular piercing and what they su suggest for aftercare and et cetera. Uh, that should be voluntary and they should do it as soon as you walk in the door. Um, usually, their consultation is designed to answer a lot of questions you may already have. Next, the piercer should evaluate your anatomy. And this is for two reasons. The first one being to make sure that the piercing is possible and that you're going to have a uh, good success. Um, if they feel like you're not going to have good success with the piercing, this is when they would discuss with you the risks that might be involved with doing the piercing. So at least you can make an educated decision on whether or not you want to take those risks. The other reason why they should evaluate your anatomy is to choose the proper size of jewelry. I usually use a caliper just to be on the safe side to make sure that there's a little bit of room in there to allow for inflammation. Speaking of jewelry, it should be, they should suggest doing it with a barbell. Um, yes, they can be healed with rings. Yes, they can be healed fairly easily with rings. And there's a long history of healing with rings, but rings are more difficult to heal. They are more prone to problems. They usually have to be extremely oversized to allow for the amount of tissue that they go through. And they tend to get knocked around and, and see a lot more movement. So they're more prone to longer healing periods and more issues. So they should suggest barbells. If they don't, ask them to do it with a barbell. Uh, if they say, well, I, you, you, sometimes you'll find out, oh, I don't stock them. And then you kind of have to wonder why. Uh, the other thing is you should never pierce nipples with curved barbells. I don't understand the logic behind this. Please ask them why they think that's a good idea. Maybe you can post a comment on it so we can all figure out why piercers want to pierce nipples with curved barbells. The reality of the situation is, is it causes additional issues, and it may have more to do with the fact that, like I mentioned earlier, they just don't want to stock that much jewelry. And it's more expensive, and they're trying to cut costs. So they're stocking curved barbells because they can use it for their navels. They can use it for eyebrows. They can use it for lip piercings. Uh, they can use it for ear piercings. So it's like a one-size-fits-all situation. That's usually not a sign of somebody that's really on the ball, so to speak. Last couple of things. The first one is, and I kind of already talked about this a little bit, is the jewelry should be oversized. It should be larger than the area, and that's to allow for inflammation and swelling. The other thing is, is you should ask them if they supply aftercare product or sell it. Uh, also ask them if they uh, supply written instructions on how to take care of the piercing and if they go through it verbally. Now, because we're in the middle of a pandemic, a lot of us have tried to limit the amount of time we're spending with clients, which involves, instead of doing it in person, producing videos, which I'm going to be producing an aftercare and consultation video after this one that will be coming out the next couple days uh, to replace that verbal interaction. Uh, you should ask them if they have something available where they actually go through it in depth and explain how to take care of that piercing. Because... After you leave that studio, you're going to be pretty much on your own. With that out of the way, let's move on to the piercing experience itself. Like I stated earlier, it can be done one of two ways. It can be done either with forceps or freehand. Personally, I like forceps. I feel like it flattens out the tissue, gives the needle a shorter distance to travel, supports the tissue, which makes the needle pass through more quickly, and also makes it easier to control the angle of the piercing. Anyway, what they should do is set up, of course, and then they will disinfect the area uh, with some type of surgical scrub, mark it, put you in a reclined position, usually clamp with the Pennington forceps or grip the tissue if they're doing it with free hand, then inject a needle in and through, and then the, jewel the jewelry follows the needle. They close the jewelry, clean it up, uh, do all that stuff, stop any bleeding that may be going on or what have you. One little thing on if you're doing both, 
Don't be surprised if the second one hurts a little bit more than the first one. I always kind of describe this as a, your body, the first time it's done, yeah, you're going to have a sharp pain. Yes, it's going to feel uncomfortable. The forceps can feel kind of like nipple clamps, a little bit more pressure or less pressure. Uh, they don't feel great, in my opinion, um, just my personal experience. However, uh, the needle going through will kind of have a sharp pain, kind of uh, uh, like a short pinch a little bit of throbbing afterwards, but the second one tends to be a little bit more intense, and that's your body basically saying it's it's kind of a, a kind of a neat thing when you think about it. The first one, your body's kind of like, yeah, you know, you should probably do something about this. You're you shouldn't do that. Then the second time, your body's kind of like, hey, you, uh, yeah, you really need to stop doing this. So that pain will kind of increase a little bit. Now, is this something you live through? Definitely. Definitely. It's not going to be nearly as bad as you probably think it's going to be, especially if you have a well-skilled, well-experienced piercer who can do it very, very quickly. Now, after the fact, it's usually going to be a little bit sensitive to the touch. Like I said, you're going to have some throbbing and aching. That can last a few minutes up to about 10 or 15 minutes afterwards. Movement's going to feel uncomfortable. Um, kind of it's going to be a situation where if you bump it, you're going to know it. For the first three to five days, it's not uncommon to see redness, discolorization, heat, tenderness of the touch, inflammation, or swelling. Now, notice I said tenderness of the touch. That means if you keep poking it and it hurts, that isn't a sign of infection. That isn't a sign that something's wrong. That means you need to stop touching it. Now let's talk about healing. Average healing time on this piercing is going to be roughly six months to a year, during which time I would suggest cleaning it twice daily using a sterile saline solution, such as Nelmed Piercing Aftercare or Nelmed's Piercing um, or Nelmed's Wound Wash. Depending on what style you use, because one comes out in a mist, the piercing style, and the other one comes out in a stream, uh, you may want to do compress as opposed to just spraying it directly on there. Cross-contamination prevention, common sense stuff. Wash your hands before you handle it, no oral contact, don't exchange your bodily fluids, keeping your environment clean, clothing, bedding, towels, not submerging the piercing in bodies of water you cannot control the quality of. Basically, in essence, that means no swimming until it's healed. So if you're planning vacations, get the piercing after you come home. If you're going anywhere where swimming's involved, if you swim on a regular basis, you need to find another type of exercise that's going to work for six months to a year. Also, keep pets away from it. Don't let them sleep in the bed with you. Um, additionally, do not sleep on the piercing. Avoid any trauma to the area. Now, everybody's different. Everybody has different shapes, different sizes, etc. But most of my female clients have stated that wearing things like sports bras, men's a shirts, tank tops, something that has kind of even support that keeps to eliminate the sway of the brass is more comfortable in that first couple weeks as the body, as the piercings are wor when they're most acceptable to movement, when they're most tender. Afterwards, you might be okay. I generally suggest also doing that while you're sleeping, just basically because it really, you're going to realize how much you jostle around in your sleep. Jewelry options. As I stated earlier, your best option is going to be barbells. Barbells made out of either implant, surgical stainless steel, implant grade, certified by a third party, implant grade titanium, 14 karat solid gold, not plated or filled, niobium if you can find it, or glass. That's your best options. Uh, do not wear anything that has sterling in it or sterling that is attached to it. Uh, your nipple is technically a mucous membrane. It can absorb that silver salts as it erodes and can cause uh, silver poisoning, which is a permanent darkening or discolorization, usually collects around the piercing holes or wherever that jewelry is against your skin. So uh, be cautious with the shaped objects is basically what I'm getting with. If you have an end that's like uh, shaped like a flower, figure out what exactly it's made out of before you wear it for you know a couple of years. Rings, they're possible. The only thing with rings is they have to be oversized to allow that area that's inside the piercing to be as flat as possible. Especially if you're going for barbells where it's perfectly straight, if you go to something that's drastically curved, it's going to cause issues in a healed piercing. It'll cause bumps, it'll cause migration, rejection, all kinds of problems. So make sure that it is wide enough to keep that area that's inside the piercing as slightly curved as possible. Usually, with female nipples, which are generally wider than men, I usually suggest the width of the nipple times at least a half inch. So if you're uh, 
to or a quarter to half inch. For example, if it's three eighths of an inch, I would suggest something around a five eighths at the smallest, and that's really pushing it to three quarters of an inch to an inch. So uh, that's one of the reasons why, if you decide you're going to switch to rings, it's best to go in and see your piercer and have them size it for you so that you have the correct size for it. The other thing is, is because you're sw switching the change or changing the shape of the of the piercing itself, it's best to wait long into the healing process before you consider it. Yeah, if it took six months to heal, you might want to wait another additional year before you put that uh, ring in, just basically because it's going to be more seasoned and it's going to be less prone to react badly to it. Let's talk about living with a piercing. The jewelry should be left in at all times. Nipple, nipple piercings are prone to closing fairly rapidly. It's a good idea if you like it, leave something in it. Only take it out to replace it. Avoid pressure and trauma on the piercing, even after it heals. Getting knocked around, getting pulled on, yanked on, caught on things is not going to feel good, and it can damage even a healed piercing and cause a whole host of issues. Nothing sucks more than going through the whole process of healing out a piercing, taking care of it, enjoying it, getting to the point where it's healed, and then something happens that causes trauma on the piercing, and then suddenly it's rejecting and having all kinds of other issues. You should always check the tightness of the balls if you're wearing barbells, uh, regardless of how long you've had the piercing. Those ends can come off, and they usually land in the nastiest thing near you, um, where even if you could put it back in, you're not necessarily going to want to. And they can get kind of expensive. You don't need to get out Loctite. You don't need to buy ply or use pliers. You just need to check them occasionally. If you are considering breastfeeding, I would suggest abandoning the piercings. Um... Yes, you can keep them in and take them in and out, as I already explained. But yeah, I'll, I'll tell you, you're going to be dealing with a lot of life changes. And one more thing in that rotation is not going to add any pleasure or enjoyment to it. So it's usually going to be best if you abandon them and give them time to close completely by the time, you know, the child arrives. Now, occasionally piercings, especially longer piercings like nipple piercings, will collect this Oh, it has a consistency of cream cheese. It can be have a very stinky odor to them, um, and usually will collect either uh, on the jewelry when you move it or right around the edge. A lot of people miss uh, miss. Uh, a lot of people confuse this with discharge. That happens during the healing process. What this stuff is is sea bumps. Uh, in dried skin cells. It's a waxy, oily substance that your body produces that, uh, uh, that keeps your skin moist, protects it, makes it waterproof, etc. With piercings, it generally collects and produces inside the piercing. Uh, in some cases, at least uh, in theory, it does this more so than it would have if it wasn't pierced. So what you need to do is just, a, when you notice it building up, cleaning it with some warm water and soap, or just getting into the habit of doing moving the jewelry slightly and cleaning it uh, to get off any of that stuff you know, while you're in the shower. No special needs, and it does not mean that your piercing's not healed. Okay, finally, end of it, let's talk about abandoning the piercing. Uh, maybe you're, you have a child on the way, maybe you're just sick of it or what have you, you've just decided that you don't want them anymore. Well, all you really have to do is remove the jewelry. If the piercing is healed healthy and there's no signs of infection or other problem, removing the jewelry will just cause the piercing to slowly close. It usually will collect, uh, the tissue will connect in the center and then it kind of fills up from out, out or from inward, outward. So it will appear that the piercings are open. You will have a small indentation scar, the entrance to the piercing. It's going to look exactly like that, but that doesn't necessarily mean that it's open. Usually it can close in the center and stay in that state where it looks like it's open for sometimes a couple years. Over time, that, that will fade. Now, when you first remove it, you should keep an eye on it. Just check it occasionally. Um, the sebums that I mentioned earlier, sometimes those will collect in the hole, and if you squeeze it, it'll come out, and it's gross, kind of like a, I don't know, like a zit. Um, so, yes, clean the area, check it. If there's any signs of problems or complications, see your doctor, but otherwise it should heal up without any issue. One final thing um, on abandoning the piercing. Usually, if the piercing is developed more or tends to be more prone to be in a wreck state, it probably will stay that way. 
usually once you pierce a nipple, you are permanently changing it. It tends to grow out a little bit. It tends to stay in that state. So even if you remove the jewelry, it's not going to go back to the way that it was originally. You have permanently altered your body. I've had some clients where it does go back to normal, but that's a rarity. Usually you're kind of stuck with the state that they're in. But, you know, that's one of the reasons why you get your nipples pierced, right? Well, that's about all I have to say. I think just about everything I have to say on this particular piercing today. Uh, if you found this video informative, edifying, interesting, what have you, please give me a thumbs up. Let me know that you liked it because we like it when you like it. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you're notified every single time we post something. If you have a question like this brought up something or I, did, or I missed something or what have you, please make a comment. Uh, I usually answer them if I have time. If you like swag, you like T-shirts, you like uh, fanny packs, you like phone cases, check out our merch store, merch bar below. There's also a link in the description that will take you to the store. Lots of different designs, lots of different styles, and lots of different products and colors. Till next time, here's hoping all your piercings heal with ease and without a single issue And If you're in the Des Moines, Iowa area, I hope to see if your body piercing needs in the future. Have a good day, everybody. Thank you for watching. And we'll see you on the next video.